Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a short video explaining, or rather re-explaining, uh, the parent constraint animation technique that we looked at in class, since it is one of the more confusing things uh, in animation, trying to get a prop to follow along with the rig for part of the animation and then not follow along with it, um, and potentially have its own animation for another part of the animation. So, um, here's what I'm going to do. I already have this animation that I made, and I kind of preemptively set this up without having the prop there just to get my idea down. Um, and I made that in like five minutes, so it's not really polished or anything, and I didn't animate the fingers. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting my prop set up. And I have the ball here, which I renamed ball instead of just leaving it as a sphere. Um, and I'm just going to group it on itself. So I'm going to hit Control G and name this ball offset. And I'm going to use this ball offset to actually constrain onto the hand. And the reason for that is that um, in case I decide to reposition the ball um, in the character's grip or anything like that, I um, I want to have the actual mesh like free to move around within um, or rather underneath the parent constraint rather than locking myself in. So I'm going to kind of place the group here and you notice the ball is still everything's a zero. Um, and this is where I want to apply my parent constraint because um, this is kind of where I know like how far away to put it from the hand and all that sort of stuff. If you wanted to, you could try to do this by just guessing and kind of parenting it um, to the hand before you even start the animation, but this way is just a little bit easier to figure out. So I'm just going to click on my wrist controller, and I'm going to control or command click on my um, ball offset group, and I'm going to go constrain parent. Of course, you have to be in your rigging or animation menu for the constraint to show up. It is in both. And now what I get is that my, um, my robot arm is holding the ball the entire time. Um, so we now have to activate the tricky part of this whole thing, and that is um, blending between keying and constraining. So um, what I need to do is select my ball offset and group again. Remember, it has to be the same thing that you put the parent constraint on, otherwise this won't work. And I'm just going to hit uh, S, just hit set, set keyframe, or you can go to key, set keyframe. Um, and what that does is obviously this stuff turned green because um, obviously that doesn't really make sense color-wise because red plus blue uh, is not green, but whatever. Um, and we also have this blend parent, which is a new attribute. So um, this is what's going to be uh, giving us the ability to control that's at one, it's parent constrained. If that's at zero, then it is just following where I set a keyframe on. And so um, pretty much I'm just going to have to set a key on that also, as well as the other stuff. And on frame 10 or 11, kind of, you know, you might have to play around with this, but um, frame 10 and then on frame 11, I will just. Um, hit S on everything again to set a keyframe, and then I'll change this to 1. Um, and I do have auto key on, um, which means that I can just change things and it will automatically update the keyframe and I don't have to hit S again. Um, but there are certain times doing this I do want to hit S. But um, So basically, I keyframe the position between frames 1 and 10 to just float there and not be parent constrained. And then on frame 11, it magically goes to being parent constrained and now follows along the arm. And I'm pretty much going to do the same thing at the end. Now, this might be a little tricky to figure out exactly where to put this. Looks like fr frame 33 is kind of where the ball should be released. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go one frame before that, frame 32. I'm just going to hit S on everything again for uh, just to get this over with. And... Then I'm going to go to frame 33, hit S again, and then I'm going to just mit tweak that blend parent and make that zero.
And of course, now there's not magically going to be animation on the ball. I do have to add some of that in. And it looks like it might be a little tiny mistake there. It looks like maybe. What happens if I grab these? So just as a reminder, uh, shift drag down here, shift drag. Um, you can move chunks of keyframes for it. Oh, that's the opposite direction of what I wanted. Maybe if I move it back. That's one frame too, too many. Um, you know what? I might just have to cheat a little bit and move this forward. And, you know, it's not really going to be noticeable that this is clipping. Plus, I might have to tweak my animation. So, um, again, this animation I did not um, spend very much time on. But, you know, if there's clipping there, it's going to be happening so fast that I can't really see it. That ball, that bird was still very slow. I don't know why I'm putting so much effort into this, but uh, there you go. All right. Fly it. Away. Anyway, um, so really, again, it's just a matter of um, creating the blend parent and then toggling between 0 and 1 on that. And just remember that you can't just toggle that between 0 and 1. You also have to um, hit a keyframe on the translate and rotate as well um, before and after that uh, gets turned off. Um, because otherwise it'll just revert to the last place that you had keyframed, which could be who knows where. Uh, and again, you know, just because you did the, you don't have to do this last. Um, you can do it when your animation is um, still blocked in. You can still change your animation after you do this. It doesn't. This isn't like oh well, I I put in the the blend parent. Uh, I can't change anything now. Um, you still have flexibility with this. Also, check that out. It just turned on. Um, screen space motion blur there, uh, so I get a little bit of motion blur in my ball. Um, oh yeah, and I was going to fix one tiny little thing that's not really related to the parent constraint, and that is, we went back here and we looked at here, there's a little bit of a wiggle, even though these frames are copy-pasted. So here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of the animated pieces. Um, some, I'm going to go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and sometimes what happens, you can see here that these uh, diamonds are um, solid instead of hollow. Uh, sometimes when, oh, here we go. Uh, sometimes when you copy paste, it will kind of weirdly interpolate those curves. So I'm literally just going to go up here and hit the auto, auto tangents button, and that should straighten those out. Um, so if that's happening to you, that's the easy way to fix that. A bit of anticipation there still it's not really that physically accurate but uh whatever anyway um so if you need to go back and replay any of this video then be my guest uh it is a video so you can slow it down or rewatch as many uh rewatch as many times as you want um but that should be able to get you through the homework assignment for this week all right thanks peace